Hello, YouTube world. It's Morgan here. I have been so busy and also resting a lot since the last time I was on here, which was two months ago. I originally said I was going to be posting or uploading a video like once a week and maybe I said every other week. I don't know. Anyways, it's been a minute. Thank you for your patience. Um, for those of you who are like actually watching and have been anticipating another video and for anyone who's new here, welcome. I'm still getting used to orienting myself on this platform. I feel like I want to delete all the videos I've ever uploaded and just like start over again, but I'm going to just keep on rolling. As you can probably see, my eyes look very tired. That's because they are, because this world is pretty exhausting. Uh, I am not a millionaire yet, so um, it takes a lot of work to become a millionaire, which is actually something that I'm striving for. Um, maybe for different reasons than a lot of people might assume, but ultimately I wanna be able to give back to this planet and like give the money back to this planet. Um, so somewhat of like an environmental philanthropist, I guess is what I'm going for. Um, but we could talk about that stuff later. I guess I wanted to just come on here and give a little bit of an update around some of the changes that have occurred in the last two months. So we moved, I'm in a new house. Um, I'm in honestly the first house that I could call my own home in nine years. Um, you know, when I was 17, my house that I lived in with my family was foreclosed on and my mom and dad separated. And my mom's sister and I moved into an apartment and it has been just lots of moving and transforming since then. So, I think in my first, or like, not first, but in the most recent introduction video that I uploaded, I mentioned um, that I traveled a lot. I spent three years in Hawaii. I grew up in California, spent some time in South Carolina, some time in Colorado, some time in Oregon some time in Texas. I really don't like to actually tell the online world where I live, um, but I'm here now and I'm really so proud of myself actually for how far I have come. Um, Honestly, it's been a while, so I don't really remember like what personal information I've already disclosed and what I've already shared, so I probably will repeat myself, and I think that's just normal, so. Um, yeah, I really didn't think that I was gonna make it to 20 or 21. I was, I had a lot of um, suicidal tendencies when I was in high school, so. It was actually one of my last suicide, it was my last suicide attempt. Yeah, this is real talk. Um, where I heard like my higher self and my guides or whatever you wanna call them or God or um, speak so loud and clear to me for the first time since I was probably a child. 
and I was laying in a hospital bed and it was just like this voice ringing in my head was like, you are never allowed to do that again. You are here for so many beautiful reasons. And I took that message and I kind of ran with it, I guess. Around the same time I had started meditating. I'd really started meditating just a couple months prior to that last suicide attempt and I'm pretty sure that it was the fact that I had already begun to develop a deeper sense of awareness of my own being um, that helped me to come out of that last attempt the way that I did. So kind of with that being said um it's it's an ebb and a flow you know uh, recovering from pretty severe um depression and anxiety and mood swings i guess is like a blanket term for them but just like uh so much emotional turmoil um, so much mental turmoil and a lot of turmoil with my own body uh, you know it, it's not something that at least for myself the, the, the journey with that really ends and maybe it will come to like a complete completion um, sometime in this lifetime i kind of imagine it will because of the work that i put in with myself but i definitely still have moments and sometimes the moments last you know months of just feeling really sad and feeling a lot of doubt i guess in my capability to make the strides that I really want to be making. Um, so, you know, through the moving process and everything, there's so much celebration for me in it. Um, again, because it's really like, it's my home. It's not someone else's home. I've lived in so many people's homes in the last, I don't know, seven years. And, this is the first time that I really, really do get to call it my own. And I'll be here for, you know, at least a year. Of course, maybe if we end up really loving it here, we'll like renew the lease and maybe we'll be here for two years. But I'm just really looking forward to being able to sink my roots in over the next year. And there's a lot that comes with being a traveler um, you know i kind of did the gypsy life and it was absolutely incredible i think that i lived like 10 lifetimes in seven years i learned so much i'm still learning of course but in the seven years of my travels i learned things that i'm pretty sure people avoid for like five lifetimes. So the fact that I've gotten to experience so much and gain so much knowledge and wisdom even from the experiences and I'm still so young, um, it's pretty incredible. Uh, of course, there are moments where I'm like, oh, I'm getting old, <laughs> um, but whatever we're focusing on the here and the now that is absolutely one of my biggest integrities is presence for you know we like to set intentions or what do they call them um i don't know whatever but we like to set intentions for you know going into a new year and for me this year I set the intention of spaciousness and presence because I really feel that it's the most important thing is to just be present. I, I 
have come to really believe that that might be one of the most important intentions is to remain present. And that presence is actually a really incredible tool, like especially in the moments when I'm feeling really sad, I'm present with that sadness. You know, I'm no longer trying to avoid it. Even if it means like sitting on the couch for a couple of hours and just being like, wow, I really don't have the motivation to do anything right now. I just wanna sit here and be. And that gives me the opportunity to listen, to listen inward, to hear the insights and the inspirations that are coming to me and through me so that I can continue to express that openly. Um, so much of my role has come to be um, to be authentic and through the authenticity I've been able to inspire and empower so many people probably more than I know but um, there's definitely no way that I would have been able to impact those that I have if I hadn't been authentic in my expression in what I was processing what I am processing in the present moment uh, and of course sometimes you can like go and gather insight from past moments and um, so it's just really really incredible you know to just to just focus on the here and the now and the present moment and like where am I what's around me and you know, sometimes we're in environments that we don't want to be present with. And that alone is a huge message to change your environment, um, explore new settings and see what environments you actually want to be present in. Uh, and that can probably help to show you more about yourself um, it does. It definitely shows us more about ourselves. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, myself included, that our external world is really quite a reflection of our inner world. Um, so that for me means that I tend to both with equal importance. You know, I tend to my room and my home the same way that I tend to myself. And if my house is getting messy, that's a pretty sure sign that there's probably a mess inside as well. And I can choose to, you know, clean the mess outside, which can help to bring some clarity inside, or I can um, focus on figuring out what the mess is inside and clear that out and that can help to give me more energy and momentum to then you know clean my home as well so you know as usual I'm not really coming on here with like a plan of what I'm going to be talking about or for how long I'm going to be talking I kind of am feeling like one of my last videos was like 30 minutes long and I think that's a little bit too long. So I want to work on being a little more succinct with my messaging, um, which I feel will just give me a little bit more room to be more consistent as well. Instead of feeling like I have to get on and say everything all at once, I'm like, I can just get on and say a little bit at a time and then I'll just make more videos, you know? Um, so there's really no plan here, uh, except for to be present while I'm recording and to allow whatever messages that are coming through me to be shared. Um, I'm saying um, a little more than I want to, but that's okay. Yeah. 
I'll share a few more things before I go. So we moved into this new house. This is week three. Yeah, I think or four. Maybe we've been here for a month. Like we might be next Monday might be like we've been here for a month. Actually, yes, that's the case. Well, like 28 days or something. Yeah, four weeks. Okay, that's math. Uh, it, <laughs> it was so stressful. I was so upset. I'll tell you what happened. Okay, so second night here, I'm taking a shower and something like fell. So I open the shower door and I look on the ground and it is covered in water but the water's not coming from the shower. And I'm just like, what is going on right now? So I finish rinsing off and then I go to investigate where all this water is coming from. And it's coming from the base of the toilet, like where the toilet and the floor meet. It's just pouring out the back of the base of the toilet. So, I really don't want to go into like too much detail, uh, but we basically kept the water for the house shut off for the first week. It took two and a half weeks for us to, um, for the, the problem, I guess, to be fixed and, and closed. There's still a little bit of worry in me that it's gonna return. Um, we had some plumbers come and tell us that the problem was like really serious. And then the management company was like, that's not the problem. So someone was bullshitting us. I felt so gaslit, like, oh, I can't even tell you. I was so stressed. I just was like wanting to make myself at home. You know, I work with energy and everything. So I'm like, okay, I wanna sink my roots in. I wanna make sure that I feel really nice and secure in this environment. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to unpack, if we were gonna have to have, you know, walls replaced, if there was moisture in the walls. Um, honestly, they never even came to check the moisture in the walls. I'm a little bit concerned about uh, the, the integrity of this management company that manages this house. Um, and I'm just doing my best to keep myself at peace about it all. And if a problem comes up, you know, of course, we'll let them know and hopefully they fix it in a timely manner. So, yeah, finally two and a half weeks into being here, we're like, okay, we can actually settle in. So, we're here. It's really beautiful. I hit the floor, though, on that first week. I was just not having it. I honestly had, like, a PTSD episode. I was just... I don't know, it wasn't super great, um, but I was just holding myself the whole time and I continued to hold myself. And honestly, I could say that probably a factor is that I hadn't been practicing yoga daily and yoga has been one of the most powerful medicines for me. You know, as far as treating my mental and emotional health, I was medicated in high school and I stopped taking all medications at 18, almost 19, and I haven't touched medication since, whether it's painkillers, chemical balancing medications, like nothing. I, I've really been able to heal so much through yoga and continue to heal through yoga. So it was honestly like the middle of last year where I kind of hit a wall and I realized how burnt out I was after 
being in survival mode um, and kind of like literally running for my life on multiple occasions and still having to, not having to, but having to and choosing to live my life with an open heart and stay in faith of my journey. Um, but you know, it was uh, a lot uh, and I am still recovering. I will say that openly. It's, it's not something, being burnt out for, you know, five years, it's not something that can necessarily just be recovered from, you know, even a couple months. So I've had to give myself a lot of grace and be really compassionate and forgiving towards myself that, you know, I don't have a lot of energy, I don't have a lot of social energy, um, and the social energy that I do have, I definitely sometimes want to go out and be social, and then I still get social anxiety, so it's all just a part of the process for me, and maybe some of you can relate, if you can relate, um, if you want to let me know, I'd love to know, and continue to share about this part of my journey. Of course, I want to share other parts of my journey as well, you know, making jewelry, um, working towards making a, a few different things. Um, I think I've talked a little bit about it in the past, in like the last two or three videos, um, but I'm working on like a sensual self-care line. Um, and I'm super excited about it. And even that, I don't have a lot of motivation for. So when I do have the motivation, I make sure to take some action. I think a lot of the times we lose motivation when we, you know, sit in our heads. Um, so even just taking a little bit of action can help to actually, you know, like increase the fuel, so to speak. So just, you know, do my best here, really to stay on my ball <laughs> um, and yeah so when I was like breaking down over the last couple weeks I was rewarded <laughs> I, I did get some rewards um, which is just incredible because I was being as graceful as I could be and mm, I'm not always the most graceful um, but I was gifted a free facial from one of my girlfriends that I work with. She's training at a new spa and she was like, hey, you want to come get a facial so that I can practice using these new products and tools? And I was like, oh my God, yes, please. So I got a facial last week for free. Of course, I'm tipping my friends when they're giving me free services. And then today, I, look, can you see? I got eyelash extensions. <laughs> it took some convincing. One of my other friends that I work with, she was doing a lash training and she needed models so she could practice. And she had to convince me because, I mean, really this is, just kind of what my eyelashes look like with mascara anyways. I was pretty blessed with um, incredible eyelashes. So I really don't see myself getting eyelash extensions again, but hey, I don't have to put mascara on for the next two weeks, so that's cool. Um, so I just took those two little gifts. I was like, uh, Morgan, you're doing great. Here, we're gonna sprinkle some treats on for you. Keep up the good work and also, don't be afraid to get better. So, uh, I guess this video is probably going to be like 30 minutes, and that's okay. So, uh, there's something else that I wanted to share. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, also in the midst of just like all the emotional turmoil that I say it's been a couple of weeks, but it's been like a year. As I mentioned, it was about last year that I kind of hit a wall and um, it's it's been emotional since then. Lots of crying. I think that I've done like 
maybe five years worth of crying in the last year because during my traveling, I never really had the opportunity to break down. I had to just keep myself up and up and up and up. Otherwise, I probably just would have collapsed. I did a lot of my traveling alone. And so there were a few moments where I had some incredible community around me that, you know, helped me and reminded me of like the beauty of authentic connection. Um, but those moments were kind of fleeting, you know, because a lot of my friends that I've made in the journey are also travelers. So everyone's just moving all the time. And um, so it's, um, I've just given myself the opportunity to cry as much as possible. And sometimes I'm like, encouraging myself to cry. I'm like, Morgan, you're in so much pain right now. Just let yourself cry. And it really does help. Uh, a lot of pain comes from suppression. So it's, it's like this pressure just continues to build. And if we continue to stifle our expression, right, which comes through these like vocal cords and this area here is like the area of expression. Um, but we tend to kind of bottleneck and keep things in and that just leads to so much tension and pain in the body uh, that crying can help to alleviate a lot of that pressure. So um, I, I came to a conclusion though last week that it was time for me to do some shadow work and I have done a lot of shadow work, a lot of inner child work. I was telling someone that I think that inner child work is like the lightest version of shadow work because it's more so about nurturing yourself than it is about like digging at yourself, which has helped me to have a new perception and perspective of shadow work that it's not about me digging into myself, it's about me embracing myself and, and going even deeper within to love myself even deeper. So it's, it's also a very nurturing process and it can also be really scary. Um, so I've gotten scared of doing shadow work. I'm like, whoa, I don't know if I wanna go in there. Um, up until recently when my perspective on shadow work has shifted a good sum. So I, yeah, I came to the conclusion last week that I wanted to do some shadow work because, you know, I know that there are still some behaviors and patterns in me and that come from me that are rooted in that survival mode and that questioning of my capability and um, just all kinds of things, right? And forgiveness and, uh, and so I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing some shadow work right now and I'm not really doing it in like a structured format. I'm, I'm just doing it. As it comes you know I'm, I'm reflecting inwardly and I will definitely participate in some like guided meditations and we'll do some journaling to ask myself some questions and just like write it out really honestly so that I can have direct feedback from myself um, because I know myself best and yeah, the last time I did shadow work was last February, I think, February of 2021. I was doing some shadow work with a sister and some really good stuff came up for me then and I haven't touched shadow work since. I think, I think even I could say that this last year of realizing how much burnout I'd been in and how much trauma I'm still healing from 
am being kind of like realistic with myself that I have some PTSD um, and I'm not approaching it from like a Western medicine stance. I'm approaching it from a holistic stance and integrating my holistic stance predominantly with Eastern medicine. Um, so it's kind of heavy, uh, honestly, but it's getting lighter and I'm connecting more so with people that I can actually open up to. And that's a huge part of the healing process. It's not about being by yourself all the time and doing everything for yourself all the time. Sometimes the deepest healing happens when you're able to just crack your heart open and be completely raw in your emotional expression and have someone that's there with you that's willing to just hold you in that moment or hold the space that you're sharing without any need to fix it, without any need to speak on it, but to just hold you and to see you and with loving eyes and um, and to just have a completely loving stance in them as they're holding you. So I've had a good amount of that recently. Um, much of it comes from my best friend um, who was my partner and we are uncoupling right now, um, but we still are living together and you know we have separate rooms we've had separate rooms our whole relationship um, but we've gotten to learn so much about each other and from each other that we can continue to really love and respect and support each other even though the dynamic that we were in is no longer so it's all just been really incredible. It's been heartbreaking, um, but you know, I drew a picture at the beginning of 2020. It was like a picture of me, and it was my heart breaking open, and then there was like a lightning bolt going into my heart, and then there was a Reiki symbol going into the lightning bolt. So as my heart is breaking open, it is healing. Um, I think that I think that we've thought of heartbreak as uh, only something that wounds us, but sometimes we've been so wounded, it's actually causing our hearts to harden. And it's through breaking the heart open again that we can actually heal and experience that flow of love that we can give and also receive. So I think that's it. I'm gonna make a little cover, what's it called? Thumbnail, I'm gonna make a thumbnail and then I'm gonna upload this video. And there's not gonna be any editing still because I still don't have that skill set and I don't really have the motivation or the momentum to learn it. Honestly, screen time is not something that I want to indulge in too much. So yeah, okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, one last thing that I wanna say because, okay, so actually I recorded a video, I don't know, like a month and a half ago, and I was gonna upload it. And as I was recording the video, my phone kept crashing. And it's because I was talking about a certain subject matter that was requested in the comments of like my first or second video. 
and I just wanted to speak to that really quickly. Um, there are certain topics that I kind of need to refrain from speaking about, especially in the beginning of uh, having this platform as a space for me to get my voice out. Um, there are certain subjects that I've spoken on very, very openly on other platforms and that has led me to be, you know, kind of put in a corner on those platforms. So I actually left those platforms and I really want to maintain this platform and I don't really want to be put in a corner. So there are certain subjects that I just won't really speak on and maybe you know if i get to a point where i'm like creating a podcast or something i can speak more openly about certain things um but yeah it was about five years ago that i was put on the social media corner um and i like tried really hard that's probably a part of the burnout actually was i was also you know traveling and doing all that stuff and trying to maintain my social media community which I did maintain and I have so many incredible people that I've connected with in the last five years I went offline from Instagram this year um, but yeah I tried to fight that corner position <laughs> for a long time and I just got really tired of it so I, I want this to be a space that I can really let my voice get out so that I can continue to um, touch you know the hearts of people and to serve the collective so if you notice that I'm not talking about certain things super openly that's probably why or if you like request for me to speak on a certain subject and I don't that's probably why I'll try to like comment back in the comments like hey this isn't something that I can really speak openly about um, just so you know because I want you to know that like I see you and I hear you and I appreciate your engagement and um, yeah that's it okay I hope you are all having a beautiful day and if it's been rough lately hold yourself be present with yourself let yourself actually feel the pain um, not in a way that is like let me add to the pain or let me try to sub this pain out with a different kind of pain but just like stop um, slow down and feel it and and see how deeply you can embrace yourself how deeply you can hug yourself there was a saying and it's kind of like that heartbreaking open thing that's something that probably influenced that image and that insight um, but there was a saying that i came across or a concept that I came across in my yoga teacher training in 2018 and it was about you know when there's walls up that so often if we want to like break a wall down we we try to come at it with like hardness with blunt force um, if we're trying to break it down right however most walls have at least one crack and what we kind of want to do is imagine our awareness like water or like a liquid light and you can imagine that liquid light that water is uh, you know traveling across the wall and it's able to find whatever cracks might be there and seep through and then of course we all know like water erodes, uh, it creates rivers, it changes the shapes of mountains, it changes the shapes of the shores, um, and it happens rather quickly as long as we continue to allow the force of that water to be in its nature. So if we can just let that 
awareness, that liquid awareness, you know, seep through those cracks, um, then we can come to the other side without being violent with ourselves, you know? So, okay. I think we're really done now and I will try to be back sooner than later. Maybe I'll record another video next week. Maybe it'll be the week after. Being in this new home is really conducive to me being in my creative element and feeling a lot more free in my creativity and just knowing that I'm completely safe since I created this space for myself. Um, and then of course my two housemates are incredible uh, and super supportive in this kind of work. So um, yeah, okay. I'll talk with you all soon.